Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Democratic Progressive Party DPP candidate Lai Cheng Se has won the much anticipated Taiwanese presidential poll and is set to be the next president. This marks the historic third straight victory for the DPP after Tsai Ling Wena completed her two terms as Taiwan's president since 2016. Lai, who was previously served as a Tanyanan mayor, has pledged to continue bolstering national defense, the economy and cooperation with democratic allies. He also said that he would maintain deterrence and uphold the cross-strait status quo during an election speech. China has increased military activities around Taiwan in recent years, including near-daily incursions into the country's Air Defense Identification Zone ADIZ, and sending military ships near its maritime patrol borders. With Lai as president, the Taiwanese have made it clear they will not back down from the Chinese intimidation. India has taken serious note of the highly objectionable visit of the British High Commissioner in Islamabad along with a UK Foreign Office official to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir on the 10th of this month. The Minister of External Affairs in a statement said that such infringements of India's sovereignty and territorial integrity is unacceptable. Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra has lodged a strong protest with the British High Commissioner in India on this infringement. The ministry stressed that the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are, have been and will remain the integral part of India. Nauru, a tiny island country in Micronesia, northeast of Australia, has announced that it is severing diplomatic ties with Taiwan and adopting One China principle to instead recognize China. The move reduces the number of countries with diplomatic ties with Taiwan to 12 and comes after its presidential polls. Taiwan's ruling anti-China party, Democratic Progressive Party, secured a win in the poll, with Lai Ching-te being elected as the president. The government has imposed a 50% export duty on molasses. The molasses is a byproduct of sugarcane used as a raw material for alcohol production. The expert duty is a strategic measure to regulate the supply and demand of commodities, ensuring domestically availability. The ministry has also extended the existing concessional duty rates on import of crude and refined edible oils by one year till 31st March 2025. The basic import duty on refined soya bean oil and refined sunflower oil will be reduced from 17.5% to 12.5%. The reduction in import duty on edible oils will ensure their availability to consumers at an affordable prices. Amid the growing tensions in the Korea Peninsula, North Korea has abolished important governmental agencies that were tasked to seek reconciliations with South Korea. According to the Korean Central News Agency, Kim Jong-un, decided to shut down offices and insisted that he would no longer pursue reconciliation with the rival. Kim blamed South Korea and the United States for raising tensions in the region. The decision came weeks after the North Korean leader urged its military to remain prepared for war. According to the statement released on Tuesday, the National Committee for the Peaceful Reunification was shut down. The committee has been North Korea's main agency behind handling inter-Korean affairs since its establishment in 1961. Meanwhile, South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol on Tuesday criticized North Korea's move to define his country as hostile, saying it showed North Korea's anti-national nature. Two bases of Baluchi militant group Jaish al adil Pakistan were targeted by missiles up to 150 kilometers deep inside Pakistan and hit the terrorist camps. Pakistan and Chinese AD failed to intercept. Iranian state media reported a day after Iran's Revolutionary Guards attacked targets in Iraq and Syria with missiles. 
The militant group previously mounted attacks on Iranian security forces in border areas with Pakistan. These bases were destroyed by missiles and drones, Iranian state media reported. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar visited Uganda's Kampala last week to represent India at the 19th Non-Alignment Movement NAM, NAM Summit. He led the Indian delegation at the two-day NAM Summit. Minister of State for External Affairs Dr. Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh represented India at the NAM Foreign Minister's meeting. Minister for State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan represented India at the G77 Third South Summit, which will be held in Kampala on 21st and 22nd of January. On the sidelines of the summit, Dr. Jay Shankar is expected to meet the Ugandan leadership and counterparts from NAM member states. The 19th NAM summit under the leadership of Uganda is being held under the theme Deepening Cooperation for Shared Global Affluence and brings together more than 120 developing countries on the platform of a crucial historical significance. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the 6th edition of Khelo India Games at Chennai on Friday last week. Addressing the gathering, the Prime Minister said that the different categories of Khelo India Games have brought together sporting talents. The Prime Minister also relaunched the revamped DD Podhigai as DD Tamil. He also unveiled the logo of DD Tamil Channel. The revamped DD Tamil Channel will broadcast daily and weekly series. Due to severe droughts since last year, ships crossing through the vital oil choke point Panama Canal have been cut down by 36%. This reduction announced by Panamian authority is expected to have a more substantial economic impact than initially thought. One of the most severe droughts to ever hit the Central American nation has stood chaos in the 80km maritime route, causing a traffic jam of vessels, casting doubts on the canal's reliability for international shipping and raising concern about its effects on global trade. The disruptions of the major trade route between Asia and the United States come at a precarious time. Attacks on commercial ships in the Red Sea by Yemen's Houthi rebels have rerouted vessels away from the crucial corridor for consumer goods and energy supplies. India announced a new alliance for global good, gender equality and equality at the World Economic Forum WEF annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland last week. The primary and the stated objective of the new alliance is to bring together global best practices, knowledge sharing and investments in the identified areas of women's health, education and enterprise. The alliance will be taking forward the commitment of the G20 leaders for the benefit of the larger global community as a follow-up to the activities of the engagement group and initiatives under the G20 framework, inter allies the Business 20, Women 20 and G20 Empowerment. Pakistan expressed its willingness to work with Iran on all issues in a call between their foreign ministers' meeting on Friday last week. Both countries exchanged drones and missile strikes on militant bases on each other's territory. Foreign Minister Jalil Abbas Jilani underscored the need for closer cooperation on security issues, a statement from Pakistani Foreign Office said. Japan's space agency on Saturday said it was examining the communication with its probe after it landed on the moon. Dubbed the Moon Sniper, the smart lander for investigating moons that is slim attempted to land within 100 meters of its target. It will take up to a month to verify whether slim had achieved the high precision goals, the agency said. Union Home Minister Amit Shah asserted that the country will be free from Naxalism in next three years. Mr. Shah said this at the 60th raising day of the Shasastra Seema Bal at Tejpur in Assam last week. Highlighting the efforts made by the Modi government, Mr. Shah mentioned that 1.75 lakh new recruitments have been made in the last nine years in the Central Armed Police Force. He said that the recent amendment in the three bills would ensure speedy justice. 
the Home Ministry said that from now onwards the FIR could be settled within three years. Union Home Minister also announced that India will fence the border along Myanmar in a bid to restrict free movement into India. The announcement came as hundreds of Myanmar soldiers crossed India's border to escape ethnic clashes. India's border with Myanmar to be protected like border with Bangladesh, Shah added. Preparations are at a final stage for the grand Pran Pratishta ceremony of Ramlalla Virajman in Ayodhya, a historic one on Monday. Thousands of Rambaks have reached Ayodhya city to witness the grand ceremony even though the darshan is closed till 22nd of the January in view of pre Pran Pratishta rituals. The whole Ayodhya city is reverberating with the chants of Jai Shri Ram and Ram Bhajans. Thousands of Rambaks across the globe have reached Ayodhya to witness this historic moment on Wednesday when the Prime Minister will attend the Pran Pratishta ceremony. Langas from different NGOs are being organized across the city for Bhog of Ram Lalla. 1,100 quintal laddus are being prepared at the Choti Chavani area in Ayodhya. Unprecedented security arrangements are at place including paramilitary forces, provincial armed constabulary and state police. Women police personnel have also been deployed for the convenience of women devotees. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded itself this week back in history. 14 January 1900, premiere of Gaikomo Pukini Opera Tosca. The Opera Tosca, a psychological drama of deceit and doubt composed by Gaikomo Pusini, one of the greatest exponents of operatic realism, made its world premiere in Rome Costanzi Theatre on this day in 1900. 15 January 1759 British Museum opened to the public. Established by an Act of Parliament in 1753, the British Museum, which counts amongst its world-renowned antiquities and archaeological holdings, the Ellen Marble and the Rosetta Stone, opened to public this day in 1759. 16 January 1991 Beginning of Persian Gulf War the Persian Gulf War, triggered by Iraq's occupation of Kuwait in August 1990, began on this day in 1991 with a US-led air offensive against Iraq that continued until a ceasefire was declared on February 28. 17 January 1893 Hawaiian monarchy overthrown Acting for Hawaiian sugar interests and their American allies, a committee led by Sanford Ballard Dole deposed Hawaiian Queen Lilio Kalani this day in 1893 and installed a provincial government with the Dole as president. 18 January 1871 German Empire established. The German Empire forced as a result of diplomacy rather than an outpouring of popular nationalist feeling was founded this day in 1871 in the aftermath of three successful wars by the North German state of Prussia. 19 January 1966 Rule in India transferred to Indira Gandhi Following the sudden death of Indian Premier Lal Bahadur Shastri eight days earlier Indira Gandhi became the Prime Minister of India on this day in 1966, assuming the office first held by her father, Jawaharlal Nehru. 20 January 2009 Barack Obama sworn in as President On this day in 2009, Barack Obama was sworn in as the 44th President of the United States, becoming the first African American to hold the office. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.